Welcome to the RTO Superhero Podcast with me, Angela Connell Richards, where we will explore the complexities of compliance and how to ensure business success within your RTO. This podcast is for anyone within the training industry who wants to learn from my experience as an RTO consultant, RTO manager, trainer and assessor, and entrepreneur, as well as the experience of other experts in this field. Listen in and let us help you become the RTO superhero you want to be. Welcome to the RTO Superhero Podcast, where we talk about all things related to the education and training industry. Hi, I'm your fellow host and RTO superhero, Angela Connell Richards. And today we're going to delve into the draft standards for registered training organisations, which were released in October 2022. Let's begin with some background information. The the standards are the backbone of quality in the training and assessment industry. They provide a set of guidelines that all RTOs must adhere to in order to maintain their registration. The purpose of the standards is to ensure that RTOs are delivering high quality training and assessment services that meet the needs of learners and industry. The latest draft standards were released in October 2022 and were open for public consultation, which closed on the 31st of January 2023. Once the feedback is reviewed from the consultation, the draft standards will be reviewed again by the government and I believe we'll be given another opportunity to provide feedback on the revised draft standards. Let's get into the details of the draft standards. The new draft standards are divided into five quality areas, each with a set of outcome statements that define the expectations for quality training and assessment. Quality area one, training and assessment. The first quality area, training and assessment, is the bedrock of the standards. It enables learners to gain industry-relevant skills and knowledge. This quality area ensures that training is consistent with the training product and reflects industry needs and supports learners to achieve training outcomes. Learner skills and knowledge are assessed in a way that is fair and appropriate and assessment outcomes are reliable. The facilities, equipment and resources provided are safe, fit for purpose and support the delivery of the training outcomes. Learners are supported to progress through the training product where they have existing skills, knowledge and competencies. RTOs must ensure that their training and assessment strategies align with industry needs and the resources provided are appropriate and fit for purpose. It's essential that assessments are fair and reliable and that learners are supported throughout their learning journey. Quality area two, learner support. The second quality area, learner support, is essential to ensure that learners are treated fairly and properly informed, protected and supported. This quality area ensures that learners have access to accurate and comprehensive information to support them to make informed decisions about the training product. The support that learners receive to undertake training is appropriate for their individual needs. Learner wellbeing is supported through access to support services and delivery of training and assessment in an inclusive, equitable and safe environment. Learners are encouraged to provide feedback and have access to avenues for making complaints and appeals and appropriate action is taken in response. RTOs must ensure that learners have access to comprehensive and accurate information, appropriate support services and an inclusive and safe environment to learn. It's important to listen to the learner feedback and take appropriate action to improve the learner experience. Quality area three, workforce. This one is a new area and you'll see quite a few different changes that will be an outcome of this workforce quality area. The third quality area, workforce, ensures that learners are trained and assessed by people who are qualified, skilled and committed to continuous improvement and learning and development. 
This quality area emphasises that trainers and assessors have current industry skills and knowledge, effectively engage with learners and competently deliver training and assessment. Trainers and assessors continuously build both their industry-relevant skills and training and assessment skills, which has been a weakness in the past. RTOs must ensure that their trainers and assessors are qualified and competent in their fields, engage learners effectively and are committed to ongoing learning and development. This is an area where I believe there will be a lot of changes and have a major impact on our trainers and assessors. Quality area four, engagement. The fourth quality area, engagement, highlights the importance of effective industry, employer and community engagement. Community community engagement is a new area and it's an area where it's been identified that more focus needs to be driven to what are the needs of the community. This is to ensure that learners receive relevant and useful skills and knowledge and to support their lifelong learning. This quality area ensures that industry and employer engagement informs training and assessment. Community linkages facilitate pathways into, through and from the training. RTOs must ensure that they engage with industry, employers and communities to ensure that their training is relevant and responsive to industry needs. This engagement can help to provide valuable insights into current and emerging skills, needs and can support learners to find relevant employment. This is another area where there's a major focus because there has been a lack of industry engagement. And what this means is the sufficient amount of industry engagement to inform the training to meet their needs. Now, it was one of the areas in the VET reform that they identify uh, through their industry, the government's industry engagement, is that the training products that were the students were coming out of were not relevant for their industry sector. Quality area five, governance. The fifth quality area, governance, ensures effective governance that supports the integrity of operations, commitment to quality delivery and continuous improvement. Continuous improvement was in the old standards back in before 2011 and there were some major changes where continuous improvement wasn't as part of the standards. And it's having a comeback, which I believe is awesome because it is uh, one of the areas that we've always continued with, with our clients and within our policies and procedures. This quality area emphasises the importance of effective leadership and accountability in ensuring that management is accountable for the effective operation of the organisation. Ongoing monitoring and evaluation informs the continuous improvement of services. RTOs must ensure that their governance structure is effective and that they are committed to continuous improvement. Effective leadership and accountability are essential to ensure that the organisation is operating effectively and efficiently. The impact of the draft standards for RTOs will depend on the extent to which they are currently meeting the requirements set out in the standards. RTOs that are already providing high-quality vocational education and training and meeting the requirements of the VET quality framework are likely to find that the impact of the draft standard is relatively minor, as they are already operating above and beyond the required standards. However, For RTOs that are not currently meeting the requirements of the VET quality framework, the impact of the draft standards is likely to be significant. These RTOs may need to make significant changes to their policies, procedures and practices to meet the requirements of the standards and maintain their registration with the Australian Skills Quality Authority. The impact of the draft standards on RTOs can be seen in a number of areas. Number one, governance and accountability. RTOs will need to demonstrate that they have effective governance structures in place and are accountable for their decisions and actions. Number two, educational and support services. RTOs will need to provide high quality educational support services that are responsive to the learner's needs. Number three, assessment. RTOs will need to ensure that their assessment practices are fair, reliable, 
valid and consistent with industry needs and ensuring that they comply with the rules of evidence and principles assessment. Number four, qualifications and statements of attainment. RTOs will need to ensure that the qualifications and statements of attainment they issue are nationally recognised and meet the requirements of the Australian Qualifications Framework. RTOs that are not meeting the requirements of the standards may face a range of consequences, including sanctions, suspension or cancellation of their registration. These consequences could have a significant impact on their ability to deliver VET, training and may result in reputational damage and loss of business. However, for RTOs that are committed to delivering high-quality education and meeting the requirements of the VET quality framework, the impact of the draft standards is likely to be positive. By meeting the requirements of the standards, RTOs can enhance their reputation, improve the quality of their training and assessment, and provide better outcomes for their learners. So that's it. That's a summary of the draft standards for RTOs, which were released in October 2022. I've broken down all the five areas. As I stated earlier, the standards are the bedrock of quality in the training and assessment industry, and we encourage all RTOs and industry stakeholders to provide feedback on the next round of the draft standards to help shape the future of education and training in Australia. The new standards provide a valuable opportunity for RTOs to ensure that they are providing high quality training and assessment that meets the needs of learners and industry. Updating your policies and procedures to reflect the new standards will require significant time, resources and planning, but it presents an opportunity to improve your services and contribute to the overall quality of the industry. To save you time, You could always go to a consultant such as Vivacity, where we are already rewriting our policies, procedures, forms and documentation. Why reinvent the wheel when someone's already done all the work? We hope that this breakdown of the draft standards has been helpful. Tune in to our next RTO Superhero podcast, whereby I'll be discussing AI-powered assessment tools. This is going to be an absolute game changer in the vet sector because the way we are creating content, our learning content uh, and our training and assessment tools is going to have a totally different impact. So if you haven't heard of AI yet, artificial intelligence and chat GPT and those type of software, tune into the next podcast because I'll be going through how you can use this in the education sector. Want to ask a question on a future episode of RTO Superhero? Just click on the link in the show notes to record your question. Want to know more about how Vivacity can help you? Book an obligation-free call with Dave today and you can do that by going to our website and clicking on Discovery Call. So that's www.vivacity.com.au backslash discovery dash call. Thanks for listening. I look forward to catching up with you again soon. Thank you for joining us at the RTO Superhero Podcast with me, Angela Connell-Richards. Please take a moment to rate and review the podcast on your preferred podcast app. Each rating and review helps me fulfil my goal of helping training organisations around Australia to learn and grow in compliance and business success.